Hello guys, this is a continuing tutorial to my last tutorial, which was about modeling a low-poly human. This will be a more complex human, uh, hopefully a more not anatomically correct human, but probably not. We'll see. <laughs> I think you'll like it though. Um, right now I'm just doing the basic setup. I will put a link in the description if you are confused about how to set up the main, you know, the, the picture setup and putting the cube in and mirroring all that, adding the modifiers. You really should watch my first tutorial if you want to follow along more closely, and then catch up with this one. Now this model is Naya from the game Little Bug by Bela Masex. He is awesome, his game is awesome, and you should definitely check it out. I will be doing some of the... I will doing, be doing quite a bit of the 3D work and possibly some of the 2D work, which I'm really excited about. The game is really cool, so... I would definitely recommend checking it out. I'll put a link in the description. But anyway, so with this model, I was hoping to go for a more anatomical correct human. She will have a complex facial structure that can be rigged, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, and her poly structure will be more sound than my last model. Uh, I had a lot to learn the last time I made a model, and I definitely still do. But this time I'm trying to focus more on making sure the poly structure stays with four sides and just making sure my model doesn't have holes and is just, you know, secure. It's just as important as the aesthetics of it because if you don't have a model that functions, what's the point, you know? Um, so this, I'm just starting the same way as I usually do. I start from the ground up because I can tell where she's balancing and if her feet are firmly on the ground and it's just easier for me, even with quad like quadrupeds, I still start this way. And I promise I will come up with a quadruped tutorial eventually, just in the commission business right now. Uh, and with Naya, I was trying to get across the feeling that she is like small and sort of fragile, but adventurous and like ready to take the world on. I don't know how clearly that came across, but I like this. <laughs> I like I like her design. I used a lot of really simple round shapes to kind of communicate her childishness and her almost like her fragility and her her like the dynamic contrast of her smallness being in a world that's kind of dark and she has to you know adventure and be brave. It I, I really enjoy protagonists that can be soft and childish but also strong. So that's another reason why I'm really excited to make this character. But yeah, so I'm actually just connecting her clothes with her body right now because uh, I've found that having like separate legs can kind of confuse your rig in the future. So I'm just gonna make it one model. So I kind of just extruded her her overalls out from her legs. Oh, another really important thing in this tutorial that I did not emphasize enough in the last tutorial is that you want to name your materials something unique because if you're importing them into Unity and they have the same material name it can cause a huge problem for the person that is setting up the scene because material like Unity has this weird material problem that I don't know why it hasn't been fixed but every time I try to import my models into Unity I have some problem or another and a lot of the times it has to do with materials and their names at the end of the tutorial series I actually plan to make the materials into a UV map, so this shouldn't matter too much, but if you plan to use material in your low poly game, you'll want to make sure they have specific names. <clears throat> and right now I'm just making sure that her body is matching up to her, her image. I'm not really focusing on external bits like her arms and her neck right at the moment, I'm just focusing on the shape of her torso. And it's sort of like a kidney bean in that the rib cage kind of tilts back, whereas the hips uh, tilt back as well. So there's like kind of a bend in the middle. It is a more balanced structure for a human. But yeah, focus on the main torso and make sure you get all of your big shapes in order. Make sure that they look right because this is the structure of your model. This is the foundation. I um, used some of the materials just Basically, I, I don't like to get too much into materials at the beginning because it can get really confusing, but it helps me delineate where the, you know, the clothes will be when I extrude them later. Right now, she's literally just one flat, 
sphere, I mean cylinder, excuse me, she's one flat cylinder with colored on clothes that like create the illusion that she's wearing something, but we'll get to it later. And right now I'm just kind of shaping the shoulders and the armholes. <laughs> Actually, now I'm saving 30 minutes into my process. Typical. But um, yeah, we're just, we're shaping so that we can have a more solid model in the future, even if she looks really weird right now. It always looks so amazing right in the beginning. Every time. And so, I'm always looking at the front and the side to make sure that everything is matching up. I try not to focus on anything like the hair, accessories, eye, not even eyes in the beginning because your polys will get really like all over the place and keeping them really smooth and organized is really important in low poly so I would just recommend keeping the most basic silhouettes you can at the beginning. But also keep in mind where the structures on her body, like her arms, her nose, and her eyes would go and you'll kind of want to put the lines of the polys in those places. Like the shoulder hole goes where the arm would be so later when you want to extrude it that seems right, you know? Right here, I'm just giving her face a little bit more roundness. I'm, ma I'm matching up the lines on her face to where her facial features will be. As like the lips, there's a line for the lips going across the head. There's a line for the nose going back to the ear. And I'm trying to just create the basic shape. If you'll notice, like if you look later, you'll see how these lines correlate to the things I'm extruding and pushing in. It, it's very important just to plan while you're going along. Alright, I'm getting near the end of the base. I will continue the rest of the model in the next video and I will see you there.